Jai Baba. Uh, my name is Leonard Willoughby, and I want to tell you uh, now how I first met Baba and my experiences. It was back in 1956 at the Domenico Hotel here in New York when Baba came over uh, to the West. I hadn't heard about Baba uh, too long before he came. I guess it was a matter of months, if that long. At the time, I had uh, been studying uh, yoga several, for several years, and uh, getting involved with the yoga practices and trying to live, uh, make this a way of life, ran into many difficulties. And uh, not knowing how to surmount these difficulties, I realized that what I read in the books on yoga and spiritual things was really true, that one needed a spiritual master. Till then, I always thought I could do it on my own, and I'd prefer to do it that way, I thought. So it was a matter of necessity that drove me to seek out a spiritual master. Uh, we had just recently come back to the city and we were told that Baba was coming to the Damanico Hotel. Would we like to come to see ba uh, Baba? And uh, hearing about Baba and uh, uh, comparing Baba's teachings to uh, what we uh, studied in uh, Eastern teachings of, of yoga were so similar that uh, we said, well, they're the same teaching. Yes, I would like to meet Baba. So Baba came, uh, well, that, we had an appointment to meet Baba the Saturday at the Demonico Hotel. And uh, I brought my wife, and uh, at the time we had uh, one child uh, with us, and we went to this, uh, the hotel to meet Baba. And not uh, knowing uh, how to gauge uh, uh, the spiritual perfection of uh, a master, I didn't know how I would know if Baba was a, a master. I'd never met a master before or not. But I had many questions that were stumping me, and I knew if Baba could answer these questions, I would know that Baba was a master or pretty close to a master. So I had in mind to ask these many questions that I had, and from Baba's answers, I would have a pretty good idea if Baba was a master and my master, you see. So going to the hotel, I didn't know that Baba was silent and had observed silence for many, many years, I thought that I would go and speak with Baba and uh, ask Baba these questions, you see. But to uh, add uh, to my confoundment, when I got there, Baba gave the order, well, no one to ask any questions, you see. <laughs> so here, this left me in complete confusion. I couldn't ask Baba these questions I had, so I had no way of assessing, you see, in my mind, whether Baba was... Uh, a spiritual master, and whether indeed he was my spiritual master. So after we met Baba, uh, uh, we left that day, and uh, when we got home, I was very disappointed. And that evening found me in a, uh, a deep period of dejection. I was like very depressed all evening, and it lasted well into the night. And like 12 o'clock, I was still sitting up, brooding over this uh, meeting. And all of a sudden, like that, my mood changed. And it was as though I was feeling like bliss. But I couldn't explain this at all, see. All I knew was that I felt good and I liked it. So the next morning, uh, I guess around uh, 7 o'clock or so, I know it was early, uh, Bernice's sister, Burl, called and uh, asked if I would like to meet Baba again that day. So I said, uh, yes, I would. And uh, so she said, okay, uh, to get there by 10 and I have a chance to see Baba again. 
Uh, so I dropped my uh, wife and child off. They were going on a bus ride, and uh, I came down to the hotel again. And I sat in a, a room off the main uh, room that Baba was meeting uh, uh, the uh, public, and we're all sitting there together. And then one of the people from the room came in and said that Baba was, uh, well, they were taking newsreel pictures of Baba, and that they would like three people to volunteer to be in the films with Baba. So right away, one woman raised her hand, and uh, they looked around, and uh, someone else uh, raised their hand, and they kept walking around for maybe two or three minutes, you see, and no one else would raise their hand. So finally, I raised my hand, you see. So they took us all into the room to meet Baba, to, yes, and uh, be in a film. But a strange thing happened. As soon as I walked through the doorway, and I looked and I saw Baba, Baba was sitting like in the middle of the room towards the wall, he was sitting in the middle of the room, and uh, there was commotion going on all around Baba. The uh, cameramen were setting up the cameras and uh, adjusting the lights. And uh, uh, Baba's close uh, New York uh, uh, devotees were uh, gathered around the uh, side of the room, staying out of the way. But as soon as I walked through the door and I turned and I looked and I saw Baba, Baba turned and looked at me square in the face. So this caught me a little uh, unnerved, you see, because uh, I had to turn around to see, well, who was Baba looking at, you see, and there was no one else nearby me, so I said, I, I had to get that one together. So I walked a little further in the room uh, with the others, and uh, I turned and I looked at Baba again, and Baba turned almost at the same time and looked at me square in the face again. So it shook me again, I looked around, and no one else was near, so I... So this happened once more, and then they said, well, okay, we would like one of you to go up to Baba and uh, to greet Baba. Uh, so they asked me to go to Baba. So as I went to Baba and embraced Baba, they were setting up the, uh, well, making final adjustment of the lights and uh, also taking light uh, meter readings. So I put my hands on Baba's waist and sort of gingerly touched my cheek next to uh, Baba's. And this is my greeting, you see, very timid, first time. <laughs> and uh, I got up and, you know, I walked back. And this next time they were going to start taking pictures. Oh, uh, but before I went to Baba, you see, now this time I was prepared because I knew Baba was silent and also that Baba said no questions. So I couldn't ask Baba questions, but I had to have these questions answered, you see, otherwise I wouldn't know whether Baba was my master or not. If I have a question in my mind, Baba will know, and I'll get my answer. So what I did before I went to Baba, I quickly searched my mind and grabbed one of these questions, you see, and I held this question in my mind, and I went to Baba with this question in my mind. And as I walked from Baba the first time, I was shocked that I didn't get an answer, but my mind was completely blank. I didn't have anything. <laughs> Nothing. My mind was blank, you see. So I couldn't get that together at all. I was just dumbfounded, you see. So that question, I couldn't even find that question anymore to ask it again, so I had to dig up another one. So this next time I came to Baba, I got another question, and I put it in my mind, and I walked up to Baba. And this time I was a little more daring. I put my arms a little more around Baba, <laughs> and I put my cheek, you know, full up against Baba, and then uh, as I got up, so this time I was a little more daring, and I put my arms a little more around Baba, and I put my cheek full up against Baba's, and uh, as I rose and walked back from Baba again, I noticed that my mind was completely blank again, no more question, you see. So this uh, threw me again. So they said, well, they asked Baba, well, do you have any other way of greeting your uh, uh, people who come to you? So Baba said, motion, yes. 
So they asked me to go up to Baba one more time, you see. <laughs> so quickly I grabbed another question, you see. And uh, I walk up to Baba. And uh, this time I embraced Baba like we were like old friends, you see. I put my arms completely around Baba. And I put my cheek up, full up against Baba. And it was like, it was really like I was there with Baba for half an eternity. That's the way it felt. It's though time stood still. I wouldn't say full eternity because I knew if I stayed there too long, Baba would tell me to get up and go. So I but as I rose from Baba and walked away, this time they asked me to go and sit with the others. Not only was my mind blank, no question, but it was like I was walking in clouds, literally. It was like I couldn't, as close as you are to me, I couldn't see you, people this close to me. It was as though clouds of smoke, you know, like puffy billows of clouds were all around and I could just see people vaguely through this. And uh, I, I had to literally grope my way to find a place on the floor to sit down. So when I did this, I found a place and I sat down. I heard someone calling from in back of me somewhere. It sounded like way off in the distance, like an, I heard an echo almost. And when I looked, uh, Don Stevens was pointing to Erish. And when I looked to Erish, Erish pointed to Baba. And then when I looked to Baba, Baba beckoned to me. So then I got up and I groped my way back to Baba, you see. And then Baba embraced me again, you see. My impression of that was that before Baba had embraced me, or I embraced Baba, this was for the benefit of the movie, you see. This last time was for my benefit. So. I walked back from Baba and, I mean, that was it. There was no questions in my mind. And uh, I was, the best way to describe it was in a state of bliss. And I stayed, I felt this feeling of closeness with Baba for about three days afterwards. And that was my first meeting with Baba.